Okay, so we're ready to start working with our gradient, gradient map. Uh, I, I kind of had to rejigger my setup here because uh, we are going to need it. If you're doing it on one screen, you kind of have to set it up this way uh, because of the way it just, the gradient editor works. Um, so I'm just going to right click and come down here and get my gradient map. Now we've already used this uh, to turn a grayscale image into a color output, but let's examine why that happened. If we come down to the bottom, this, this represents our gradient. Now it looks black and white right now, but if we open up the gradient editor, we can see that it is in fact, it's got color information. Just currently it happens to be set to you know this white and this black so, but it but it's actually got all the RGB information it needs now the way the gradient editor works it's actually pretty straightforward on this scale here whatever color appears anywhere along this line is going going to correspond to this grayscale value. So by clicking on here, I've opened up the gradient editor. And by clicking on these guys, I have now opened up the ability to edit the color at this particular point. So let's see what happens if we set that color. Let's make it darker. It's kind of weird if you but I can set that color anywhere along this point. And now, instead of giving me a gradient corresponding from black to white, it has now translated any, it's now reading this grayscale that it, it's reading this grayscale and it's replacing these grayscale values with the corresponding color that it sees along this gradient right here. So what that means is if I click on this point to edit this point and I give it a new color, that gradient has now changed so that the white areas corresponds to this dark blue color and the black areas correspond to this red color and then all the various shades of gray in between correspond to the all the various shades, their corresponding shades that you see along this gradient. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to erase this one. I was having weirdnesses. Uh, I'm going to make a new one because I had a weirdness before when I tried to do this with, like after having done that, with make, making a handmade gradient to doing what we're doing next. Uh, the other thing that you can do with a gradient editor and it doesn't matter. You can, you can pick your colors. Um, it, whatever you do here, whether you do it manually or you do what we're going to do now, which is pick a gradient, it will overwrite. So if you're, if you're kind of messing around with colors and you kind of sort of maybe like one, make a copy and do another gradient because they're hard to get back exactly the way you had them. I click pick gradient here. Now it's going to, it's, it's working off the screen. So it doesn't matter. It's not specific to, uh, so, you know, like clicking on something in Substance Designer. You can click anywhere on your screen. So I went on to Google and got, I searched, uh, I believe, rough brick texture, and I came up with one that I'm I, purely for the colors involved here. Now, I'm gonna left click and drag, and that black line I made has now corresponded to a whole bunch of points, like way too many points that I need. Now, you can adjust that to a certain degree by this precision thing, so you can, you can kind of lessen it like that, or you can, and or, you can manually start to delete points. So I can highlight one or I can grab a bunch of them and I can delete those. I can also move them around. I can click on any point in that gradient 
and it will make me a new point corresponding to exactly that color and then I can start moving that guy around. So you can actually start doing a whole bunch with this. Now I'm going to get a gradient I can actually use. Actually, you know what? We can actually use this because I was just going to pick up colors off of this. It gave, it gave me too many, but we just erased a whole bunch of them. So that made life easier. Yeah, we, we, I, I kind of like this. Okay. Um, let's keep that gradient the way it is. We're going to shut this down right now. And I want to take a look at, at, at my actual grayscale map. Oh, you know what else we're going to do? We're going to maximize that so we have our whole screen back. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Um, well, I'm not entirely happy with it from a, from a, as a color map for different reasons, but I think as an overall map, before we start separating out what we're going to be doing with the color, I want to add one more thing here. The issue I'm having is these areas right here, uh, like the, you know, where, where you've got this, where it's, I'm not getting a crisp delineation between each brick. And again, that, that's a relatively simple thing to fix. We're going to use exactly the same idea as what we did here. Now, we don't want to adjust these masks because we're using them for other things. Uh, and we don't want it this thick because, I mean, I could overlay this. We're going to do it with a blend node. So we're going to take this result, going to get a blend, and we're going to overlay another set of sort of actual brick lines on top of it with using a uh, darkened blend. Now, if we go ahead, let's take a look. If we go ahead and do... If we go ahead and do, it's like we just went and got rid of way too much. So instead of doing that, we're going to make a new pairing of these specifically just for that overlay. So the first thing we did was we blurred our original brick to get the width that we wanted. And then we got a levels to darken it up. Let's plug that in so we can see what we're doing. Uh, let's go back to our level. Let's double click on that so we can see it. Come on. So you can already, well, you can't really see it yet. Let's, let's do those levels. So as I start to bring this in. Oh, first of all, I forgot to bring this down. We don't want it really blurry like that. We, we want it, the whole point was to make it much smaller. Um, so we, we kind of want it m more like that, right? Maybe even a little bit smaller. So, you know, just really kind of small. And then we we because we got we got the size that we wanted using these two, but I think it's too sharp now. So I'm going to go ahead and put another blur node in there. And again, I'm going to double click on this to see my result. And again, it's not going to be too blurry, but we're just going to fuzz up those edges a bit. So that's kind of that's zero. Now we can start bringing it up. A little too much. Yeah, so that kind of gives us a bit more definition in between the bricks. If you if you compare this one, see we're getting kind of muddy areas here, and then here we're still retaining a lot of this nice roughness on the edges, but we're really giving it a. There is one spot that's an actual sort of space in there. Uh, and so we're going to use this as our new. We still have to hand. We still have to hand attach these because 
these are all output nodes, so we can't do it as a group, but we're going to replace that. Now, we can look at the 3D view and see how much better it looks already because it's, it's, it's applied that sort of crispness now to the very deepest parts of also the normal map. Oh, no, not yet the normal. Oh, look what we did. We forgot um, this one right here. We forgot to fill the alpha with input. It, it'll work fine in here. Uh, it's just not going to work in Unity or uh, Unreal with it set the other way. We forgot to set this one, so let's do this one. And yeah, well, it's going to affect the other maps more anyway. Uh, so here is kind of the the height slash normal the way we want, and I, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. What I'm seeing here, which we're going to kind of fix right now before we get too much into the color. Remember, we're the, the the gradient map when we're doing when we're doing color from this stuff it, it's gonna loosely resemble let's put this one in actually um it's gonna loosely resemble whatever's going on in here but not necessarily and you have to remember that you're using this grayscale map in, in a different way than than you're using your height map and currently we're, we're working this as a height map, which is why our roughness is also looking pretty much the exact opposite of what we need. So, you know, like one problem at a time. Now, with the color, what I'm concerned about isn't so much height as it is color zones. Now, for the most part, it's okay. I have, you know, these white areas here, and I have some nice grays here, and I've got you know, one of the main reasons I put in this this overlay is because I, I do want a very distinct edge on each one of those, and I'm going to help that along with the color also. What I don't want in this particular case is I this these grayscale values here at sort of the 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 deep the the little deep rivets of the sort of the detail on top is almost the same value as this black here. I want these bricks to be kind of a, a completely different color than what's going on here. So what that means is that I'm going to have to take what's going on on the surface of here. I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to bump it up ever so slightly so that I can actually, what I'm trying to do is, for lack of a better word, create color zones. Uh, when we start moving those points in the in the gradient map, when we start moving them around, if we've got it kind of more or less pre-planned out as far as our grayscales go, I know that my deepest darks I'm going to have kind of as one sort of sort of color, and then I'm going to have my white areas and lighter grays as another sort of color, and then I can have my mid-range grays as another sort of color, and it just kind of makes it easier to deal with your colors if you've kind of planned out your gray scales ahead of time. So it looks more or less okay, like I said, except this this top part here, we're just going to lighten up. And, you know, we've already got the mask built for that, so it's just a question of um, doing a little trick and, and just fixing just... We're going to leave all of these noodles going to where they're going for now because you know, we're not either, either it's the height and it's set the way we like it and, or the normal and it's set the way we like it, or we haven't dealt with it yet. So we're now going to start running things off of, we're going to start putting things in between this and this. So it's only going to apply to our gradient map. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Probably the simplest to get a blend node. Now, we're only dealing with the those very top areas, right? So these things up here. So this is the mask that we used for that. So let's go ahead and bring that up here, right? Because we, we don't want to touch that stuff down here. 
and so that means those have been blacked out and we've got the white areas up here. And we're going to take this very same map and because you know when you think about it what we're trying to do we've got this guy here now we we want essentially the same thing and we want this bottom area to stay the same we just want to be able to control these two areas in a different way so this is kind of it's it's kind of I don't know it's a cheat it's a whatnot um, we're taking the same map and for each one of these noodles I'm going to give it its own levels node. I do this a lot. So what we've done now, let's let's move, this is going to be to go with our gradient map, so let's just keep things organized. So we've set up this blend here. So I'm, I'm now double clicking on this blend and that, that's what's appearing up in my 2D window right now. I've got, remember my, my top input here is the one that's being affected by the mask. So when I start adjusting the levels, now I'm not I'm not touching sort of the, the variations within here, so I'm not really dealing with these guys up here. I'm doing my basic sort of high in ins and outs. So if I want to make it lighter overall. Now you see I'm up here, it's lightening the whole thing, right? But here, it's only doing what I'm telling the mask to do. So, this is kind of sort of beginning to do what I want to do. It's, again, it's, it's lightening up my top areas, so I'm getting a, a completely different value now. There, there's no way that you could mistake this grayscale value for what's going on down here. But now it's all ugly and straight again. So that's easy enough to take care of because all we need to do, since this is the mask in question, I'm going. I'm not going to use this blur because I want to blur the black line, not have a gray line. So just like we did here, I'm going to go get. I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to put a second blur in there. And then let's take a look. At what's going on here. Come on. And now that's kind of more like what we want. So let's start fooling around with this and see if that's working better. So as I bring this up, it's probably too blurred. So I'm going to go like way too high so that we can kind of see what we're doing. So I'm going to go back down to this blur and make it less intense. And you'll see that we're starting now to get this differential without having that line be too sharp. So let's bring this down to something reasonable now. And so what we've done, yeah, because all we're looking to do is to separate out these values. And in fact, we've got enough stuff set up now here that we can start going into um, our gradient map and if we need to adjust stuff it'll it'll make it easier to adjust later because I can now adjust my colors not just from here but by changing my values here as well you see because I can start doing stuff like this and it's it's changing the colors because I'm changing the grayscale value and then I also just because I put it in here, might as well. I can also change the grayscale value of my darks. So I've kind of split it up into two sections that lets me kind of control it a little bit easier. Uh, okay, so let's just we'll leave we'll leave it there for now, and let's get back into our gradient editor and start messing with our colors. So just like we were doing when we were messing around before, um, we can start to manipulate. You can see it kind of as I move this up, you know, like right, you know, you got you got to start to get changes. Now, first thing I want to do is kind of establish those zones I was talking about. I'd really like to establish them um, 
and you know to get a better idea of where I want to monkey around with my gradients. I'm gonna I kinda like this color so I'm gonna keep it. I'm, I just made another copy by clicking up there and what I'm doing is I'm I've set up a bracket so I've got this this is exactly the same color and I'm gonna bring whatever the next sort of point is along that line. I'm gonna get it so it's I really don't have any gradient at all. I want a really sharp line in there. And now I'm going to sort of grab up this bunch here and I'm going to start moving it up the scale. And as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm looking at my 2D view and I'm watching the color change. Now notice how that white is starting to creep in. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find Now remember, there's absolutely no gradient on there at all. So this is kind of the, the, the deepest deep. This is the color, whatever, whatever color I end up putting in here, this sort of sector in here that is now this one color defines my deepest deep area. So what, what corresponds to the black and the very darkest shades of gray. Now, I've got this little point hiding up under here, so I'm just going to kind of try to grab him. Nope. Let's try that again. Yeah. No. I got a little too close. I'm going to move this down. Oh, now I got him. Okay. So now you'll notice that as I start moving that next color away, probably better if we do it with a darker color. So I'm going to switch these two. As we start moving this away, you'll notice that that color, you know, so th this starts to give me a gradient coming off of whatever my darkest color is. So I'm going to keep doing that to like basically get, you know what, sometimes it's easier. I'm just going to click this one point here. And I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a wacky color. I want to see what I'm doing here, so sometimes I'll I'll do that, um, and then I can go ahead and, and move them up again because it's it's gonna it's gonna show me exactly because I I, I kind of want it yeah like that. Now you see, this makes it very easy to see that the deepest parts of my brick in here are going to be showing up this color. So what I may want to do is come back in here and just pull this up just a wee bit more so that I can keep the tops of those bricks kind of clean. So so you see how I'm, I'm, I'm creating, I have to go back in here, go back to my gradient editor, so you can see how between um, what's going on in here and what you're doing in the gradient editor, it starts giving you uh, you know quite a bit of control over um, over what you're doing with your color. Now I, I kind of like the purple where it is. Now I'm going to find my next sort of zone. And at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that be because you know these are, I'm I'm now sort of top area, so I can go ahead and and just grab this one and switch these two guys out. So I'm just gonna click that one and delete it. So that's starting to look. You know, actually, I want this lighter. No, I don't know what I want. No, I want I'm gonna leave that the same. I'm gonna make these guys darker. So. I'm going to get rid of some of these really light ones. And I'm thinking that I, I kind of had this idea, um, you know, I, I know I said metal first, but I think what I'd like to do instead, I think it'd be fun to kind of play with, um, play with the roughness and have these, the things that are, are white on our map here to have them be kind of like glaze that's still sticking to these bricks. So, we could either make it brick colored or some other color and then have the bricks underneath and um I think it might actually look better with a with a darker 
with a darker grout but I'm not sure about that so again we, we can fool around with that so that's my plan so what that means is that we're gonna get rid of a lot of colors up here it, 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 life, it makes life much easier the less points you have I mean the every point is something to manage um, you can get different effects with uh, let's take a look at what's happening with this white area the 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 farther the larger my gradient is the, the the smoother this fall off you can get like really psychedelic effects by and like making rings around things by by doing stuff like this if you get these like really shallow gradients happening you can sort of you can you can get some pretty funky and weird effects um so i actually love fooling around with these things but they i mean I can I can get lost. I, I can literally spend hours doing this. So I'm looking right now, just like I did down here. I'm I'm trying to find take my one here. I'm trying to find this zone of where I want my quote unquote old glaze to be. So that'll be the very top of the glaze. Let's let's make it a different color. Blue, blue. Turquoise. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Um. So that's that's the top of it. So we actually want to copy this color and kind of bring it down in here. I kind of like it a little bit, you know, because it, it's fading through time. We're, we're kind of doing um, variations on this blue. So let's pick this one instead. Instead of the exact same color, we'll pick something that's very close to it. And then let that... No, I want that. We're still... Okay, we're, we're, we're going to move. That's it. We have to start moving these guys back up. We went too far. just this one and then move him up and then get rid of this one well, I kind of want this sort of in between the blue and the tan color where it's kind of like maybe a couple of molecules are still hanging on Let's take a look and see what that looks like on our color map. Um, wow, the blue looks really different. I guess it's to do with our roughness, etc. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, I mean, they also look like really shiny <laughs> and really metallic. Um, I think what I'm thinking about right now is only color, and sometimes it's kind of hard to do when you've got all these other things jumping out at you. I think it's going to work better with a darker grout. Uh, the nice thing about substance is that you're not destroying anything. It's really easy to sort of, okay, I got this section more or less the way I want it, and then I can go back to something else, work on that, see how they, you know, the two play with each other and change things up. Um, what happens if we do this? Um, yeah, I, th I think I like it darker. Um, it's really hard to see right now with everything else messed up. So I think I'm going to leave for now. I'm going to leave the color the way it is. And um, in the next video, we're going to address the, the roughness in the metallic maps. And I think once we've done that, it's going to make it a lot easier to make these color decisions because it's very hard to tell right now because everything else is so off. 
So I think I'll stop the video here and we'll pick up on the next video. We'll, at this point, we've pretty much learned all the new things we're going to learn. We're going to do another one of these guys for our, certainly our roughness. We may even do one, um, no, we're not going to do any metallic on this, I think, uh, because it's brick. So, you know, why don't we just deal with that right now? We're going to change this to a grayscale. And we are going to just kill all metallic there. Well, that made the blue much better right away. Um, so I, I guess if we leave it like this, we can get it to look like paint. If we make it shiny, we can get it to look like glaze. I think that'll be a good exercise in seeing what our roughness maps can do. But again, we'll, we'll pick that up in the next video. But it's it's starting to look more like something.